In response to the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, BP has released over a million gallons of highly toxic dispersant into the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, seeking to sink the oil from the surface. According to experts, this will even further degrade the fragile coastal ecosystem and leave the waters unfishable for decades. We expect that this, you know, the Corexit slash crude oil mix is going to be devastating to fish eggs, fish larvae, the zooplankton. So, you know, we think that the, you know, the real environmental impacts of this are going to be enormous. The health effects that are being experienced by the ocean are one with the slick because it's cutting off the ability to oxygen to move from the air into the water. But mostly when they went to using the dispersant, it moved the slick into the entire water column and contaminated the bottom sediment. I think BP continues to use the dispersants because they don't like big sheens and big plumes of oil. And so to the extent that they can use a, uh, dispersants to break them up or get them to sink to the bottom, you know, sort of out of sight, out of mind, that's, that's all part of their PR machine. The fact that the EPA said, hey, you shouldn't use Corexit, there are less toxic alternatives that work better on this type of crude oil that are out there, and then you know, BP pushed back, and basically the EPA was powerless to do anything, you know, that's outrageous. I think the reality of it is there's a, there's a value to the industry of getting the, the oil off the surface. Uh, and that value is that it's then harder to see, it's harder to track, it's harder to quantify what the impacts are. Uh, I think there's, to a degree, a PR move here. And, you know, ultimately the Gulf of Mexico is going to pay the price for that. If we were headed on the surface of the Gulf and we could see it, you know, we could fight it a lot better. And we could know, you know, kind of where it is and where it's, how it's coming at us. It would likely be able to be uh, boomed better than it, uh, than it is right now, because, you know, as you guys have probably seen, it's, it's very hard to boom this oil. Uh, it comes in below the booms. We're going to have this summer a vast oxygen-starved area in the Gulf of Mexico. The dead zone tends to stretch to the west. You know, this oil is coming more towards the east. And so what we're going to do is have, you know, multiple layers of hypoxia likely uh, in, in many different uh, parts of the Gulf of Mexico, which we think could have very significant ecological impacts. The slick and the dispersed crude in the water column are also interacting with the nutrients that are coming down and making the dead zone worst. But when you disperse the slick into the whole water column, you basically kill the water column and you kill the sediment organisms. The marshes and estuaries are contaminated with the oil. It's killing the vegetation. The vegetation is what holds the soil and sediment and the marshes together. So every time we have like a, a strong weather front, we're going to start losing more and more of the soil marshes. Then the oil has highly toxic polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons, they will be damaging any of the seafood that's there or killing it. And then when the seafood starts repopulating, they're going to bioaccumulate those chemicals up the food chain. And so even when we start having the seafood replenished, in fact, it's going to be contaminated and not be available to be harvested for, for many, many generations. Generations? generations, because it's going to stay there for a very, very long time. The interesting thing, the pelicans were destroyed in Louisiana as a result of DDT making the eggs shells very thin. And when the pelicans sat on the eggs, they crushed the eggs. Those pelicans were imported from Florida to Louisiana, and they're now making a comeback. They were just taken off the endangered species list, and now we're going to lose a huge number, depending on how long this goes on for. So it's had a huge impact, not only on humans and human health, but on the wetland and estuary health.